Hi, this is Dave Hunt. I am an application engineer with uh, Pathway Software, and I'm based in Dallas, Texas. And I wanted to take just a few minutes to uh, introduce you to a nice new feature with ADS 2021. We have an updated ODB++ exporter, which has a new plethora of features and um, really abilities that take it much farther than the existing ODB++ exporters that we've had for, honestly, a, a great number of years. So we've been looking forward to this for a long time. R&D has been working with this for a long time, and they've released it in beta form uh, in ADS 2021 update one and later for you to uh, check out and, and play with. Um, I wanted to introduce that to you today, show you some of the menu items, and just kind of go over very quickly and shortly, a, uh, uh, give you a quick overview and introduction to what this, what this looks like. So in the ADS 2021, what you're going to need to do is do a couple of little setup uh, steps to get you going on the new feature. Uh, first thing you'll need to do in ADS is locate your user de underscore sim config file and add it. Add this line ODB plus ODB underscore export underscore enable equals one. And, and in your OS uh, system environment in Windows, you'll need to set up the variable ODB underscore export underscore beta underscore enable equals to one. Uh, to turn the feature off, of course, just delete these particular variables or just set them to zero and you'll be able to, to move right on ahead. Um, just some new very quick overview uh, updates to ODB++ Exporter beyond the functionality of the existing one. Uh, there's now a new substrate stack uh, feature that reads in the existing tech substrate in ADS, uh, layout feature net names, we have a component package and instance support feature, and we can do a DC net listing for testing. And these are just a few of several of up upcoming new features that are gonna be part of this, the ODB++ exporter in the future. This is an ongoing work in progress and look for more updates and features that are, that are forthcoming you know, soon. So to take a quick look at this in ADS, I just wanna walk you through how the menu items look, walk you through what some of these mean and kind of guide you through what to expect when you see this new feature inside of ADS. I've brought up an ADS layout window. Um, just as a nice feature, Richard Clark, who is the primary developer of this exporter, has provided me with a really nice workspace that I can give to you folks, uh, if you so desire, uh, to play with sort of a round trip of in and out uh, of uh, simple workspace um, layout to look at. I'm not going to go through that entire process today because essentially it's a simple in and simple out and back sort of round trip importing process of this. I'm going to stick to just the menu items and the GUI today, um, but just uh, know that we do have some sample workspaces available if you do desire and contact me if you'd like to have that. So to enable this feature, as I showed you before, you'll have to set up those environment variables and options. And once you do that, you'll be able to go to the export feature in the ADS layout window, navigate down to the existing. You'll see we all have the existing layout features for export there. It's been forever, including the old ODB++. But down at the bottom, you should be able to find the beta version that's in play today. So it's there. Uh, nothing up here at the time up in this area is uh, is essentially turned on right now. So when you get to this window, simply just click on OK, and you'll be presented with your new options uh, menu for export. So on this particular window, you'll see that when you're ready to do an export, you'll have a product model name. That's basically just going to be the top level directory name in your workspace with an underscore product model or underscore PM designator. On the product name, you have a designation space for your output directory. This defaults to the root of the ADS workspace. You have an options path here, um, defaults to an ODB plus underscore options dot OPT file. The ODB plus plus substrate. Most of the ODB plus plus exports is driven by the layers and stack defined in an ADS substrate. Uh, by default, this will be the designer's master substrate in that workspace or what we now call the tech substrate um, that will drive this. Uh, it can be any other substrate that could qualify as a master anyhow, anyway, but you know, this is what we're going to default to right now. 
Um, the, we now, uh, then we also have our, our options and our layers um, designator here in this window as well. So if we hop into the, uh, the options for our export, you'll see we have a number of new tabs here and new options available. If we look in the general options tab, we have an override an existing product uh, model. If that's checked, uh, what's going to happen is the existing product model uh, directory or the compressed archive file will silently be overwritten. Pretty simple. Um, compressed model, product model tree. Uh, if you check this, uh, that model directory tree will be compressed into a single archive file using the requested compression format. Um, same here, if we check the product model tree for deletion, um, uh, will be, be deleted after we create it. So it's pretty nice to have that little quick and dirty um, way to just sort of process these files. Export package outlines is a bounding box of pins and shapes. Uh, if you leave this unchecked, uh, all the shapes found in a component's layout footprint view, regardless of what layer they're on, will be exported as an outline, a package outline in the uh, ODB++ file. If you check it, that package outline shape will be a rectangular bounding box that encloses all shapes in the layout view there. And the bounding box, if you want it to, it works better for ODB++ import, honestly. So we'll stick to that. And then associate package footprint shapes with enclosed pins. Uh, typical ADS component footprint designs don't use area pins. So, you know, there's no pin pad to export usually in the EDA data file. If you check this, uh, the export it will look for shapes that enclose exactly enclose exactly one pin and export that shape as the pin pad for that pin, which is nice. And if you uncheck it, the pin pad will just be a very small circle in that pin snap point. So, and then here's your areas of what top, here's your fo file form that you want to uh, you know compress this file into. You have zip, TGZ, or other type file formats for the uh, for the export. If you hop over to the component name tab. Uh, in general, the exported ODB++ component package instance names are the same, and they're all derived from the same cell names. So if you want to sort of pre-append pre the library to all those package names, just check here at this particular dialog box. Um, the ODB++ exporter, you know, it exports all the components used in that top-level design to the ODB++ product model. Uh, the component name chosen for export is the ADS cell name of that placed part design. Uh, if the components come from more than one library, just as, you know, the cell name may not be unique. So if this option is checked, the component library name is prepended to the component cell name in that ODB++ package. So if, this, if you uncheck this, the library name will be prepended only to components placed from an external ADS library. So if we hop over to the Diagnostic Options tab, just some more information here. Uh, you know, no interactive features. Since you know, if you just basically want to, uh, if you check that, the export process is silent. No any further interaction or notifications from the tool at all. Um, show all log messages, as it says. It'll, all the generated info, all the error messages, warning messages will be written to a log file and presented to you. Um, generally, just an informational, you know, as we have in all of our simulators, informational processing here. Um, enable verbose logging. If you check this, you'll get additional log messages uh, during the, uh, the processing. It's really useful for diagnostics and uh, just a nice little extra added what if to have there and to reduce your clutter in the log. Um, skip component package and instance export. It's kind of a big one kind of hidden down here. If you check that, the component information will not be exported to the package section into the component layers directory. So check this if the ADS design does not follow the you know, required component footprint rules and you just don't want to have that component process involved in your export. Okay, And then finally, just taking a look out at the layer export window, this is similar to what we had before. Uh, the ODB++ export layer selection dialog, it's really used to control the export of additional ADS layers to the ODB++ um, uh, format. Um, typically, ADS documentation layers are not mapped in the master substrate, so they will not be exported by default. So what you're going to see here, for example, is all of these tech layers that are part of the actual layout uh, master substrate are sort of grayed out and checked by default for your export. So all those are included for you. You have to sort of manually add any additional layers that you would want to have. So as you see here, 
Um, the first column in the table determines if this layer is going to be exported to the ODP++ you know, production model, or in the second column will give you, uh, you know, if the layer was mapped in the substrate, and if it's not, then you can actually add that to an, to an export. Um, mapped layers, as I said, are always exported. So the checkbox for these are checked and deactivated. Unmapped layers can be checked or unchecked, driven by whatever you want to provide into your actual ODP++ export um, package. So that's really what I wanted to go over today, was just a quick and dirty introduction, show you the basis of what this is going to look like, give you a quick overview of you know, what this looks like in terms of how to set it up, give you some guidelines on how to turn this on in ADS, and then walk you through what each of these dialog boxes do and what they mean. So I hope this provides you with some impetus to go off and try this out on your own, throw some of your own layouts at it, uh, check out and see how these round trips go on your own layouts, and I hope that you, uh, you enjoyed this particular